Yeah. Daring Dash and the Distressed Philly by Chaotic Discord. I was scared too. Skulu studied the blades of grass and trails of dirt below her hooves as she walked. Just a few feet in front of her, Rainbow Dash led the way back through the woods to the cave they had all been camping in. Rainbow Pony's switching spectrum tail kept popping up in the Phyllis' peripheral vision. To think that the fastest, coolest Pegasus ever was going to take her under a wing, and even better, become the big sister she'd been wanting for, like, ever. Hey, Rainbow Dash? Yes, Squirt? The mayor responded, using a hoof to push aside some bushes and branches. The gaping wide entrance to the cave was now in sight, and Dash made a triumphant snort as if it was some great accomplishment to relocate the cave cliff, visible over the trees as it was. I was just wondering, how would you know how to find me? I, I thought you were sleeping when I left the cave earlier. Dash's high-spirited trot came down to a steady walk. She cocked an eyebrow, laying back over her shoulder and made eye contact with the little filly as they trotted into the mouth of the echoey cavern. Dash lowered her voice noticeably. Well, it was kind of weird, actually. I had a dream where I was in the Wonder Bulls, and we were flying around and showing off our stuff at a show rehearsal. All of a sudden, just before I was going to wow Spitfire with my moves... Princess Luna popped up out of nowhere and told me you were in trouble and that you'd ran off into the woods by yourself. I woke up and saw you weren't there, so I came out looking for you as best I could. I heard your voice over by the river after following your scooter tracks. Turns out I got there just in time, as always. <laughs> she, she got visited by the princess, too? School always claimed to herself with a cute bite of her lip. Her tiny bone being remit. Reminiscent wings fluttered so fast it made a buzzing sound. Princess Luna really had been looking out for her, hadn't she? She not only talked to Skulu about confronting her fear, but she even saved her life too. Well, here we are. Home sweet cave. Now, it's seriously time for some of that shut-eye I've been craving. Dash chuggled, walking over to her cozy sleeping bag and flumming down on it with a thud. She tucked her lower hooves down inside and gave a contented smile at the cool temperature of the fabric. Within moments, she was happily tucked against her pillow, blissfully unaware of the tangerine filly who was now garnishing a sudden wide-eyed expression. Returning thoughts of the horse from, ni from, the ni from her nightmares had begun flooding Skulu's mind all too quickly. She peered around, expecting to see a dark shadow, or to hear that horrible neigh she had heard from the f heard before fleeing the cave in the first place. That noise was. It had to, it had to have been the headless horse. Well, the creature could have made noise like that. Even if it followed her out from the cave, it might have followed her and Dash back in. What if it got her? Or Rainbow Dash? One of friends or the sisters? The cave was quiet for a moment. Skulu made a nervous sigh and trod over to her own slightly smaller sleeping bag, throwing the covers off over herself and laying down, trying to ignore her thoughts. A rock dislodged and tumbled down from the wall somewhere out of view, and the filly's jumpy heart rocketed into her throat. R Rainbow Dash? She said with a very wary voice. Mm. Dash monotoned. I, I really don't feel that sleepy. Dash Aww. groaned a bit to herself. After a moment, she sacrificed her more than comfortable position in order to sit up, laying on one elbow. She stared at the filly, who, now suddenly put on the spot, loudly cleared her throat and chuckled meekly, kicking off her blanket and putting her front hooves casually behind her head. Dense and fatigued as Skulu's big sister was, Dash hadn't the faintest clue what was really going on. The connection from "Don't feel sleepy" to "Still scared" was still was a lost message to her. All right, I know, bite. Why can't you sleep? I uh, well, I guess I'm just a teeny tiny bit scared. 
Are you all worried up because you're dipping the river? I bet the water must have been kind of cold this time of night, huh? Dash guessed. Scooch stopped mid-sentence. After a moment of blank-faced thought, she giggled and nodded. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it was pretty cold. Rainbow nodded knowingly and got out of her sleeping bag completely, circling around and prodding the covers for something. Thought so. Well, how about this? AJ brought along one of my favorite books when I asked her to, because I figured I might get bored at some point along the trip, and I could read some of it if you want. It's a pretty awesome story. Dash made a barely audible aha when she found said book hiding underneath the end of her pillow. Grabbing it with her mouth, she stood up straight, made a glance or two at Applejack and Rarities over the top sleeping tent, and put the book back down. Maybe it'd be a better idea if we read out by the campfire. I don't need AJ or Rarity getting on my case about waking them up with my reading. Rainbow Dash, I'll have you know I need my beauty sleeping. I can't have you reading so loud. Skula couldn't help but giggle at more of Dash's Rarity impression. She had to admit, the idea of a story, a non-spooky, non-spooky story with... No less sound like good way to keep her mind off of the headless horse. More reassured than before, Skulu followed her idol out of the cave. Dash had begun dragging her knapsack with her. Once Dash had relit the campfire for light and positioned her sleeping bag appropriately for maximum exposure on a book, she reintroduced herself to the comforting inner folds of her knapsack. Sighing and laying the book out in front of her, she laid back against the wrapped, wrapped up head of her sleeping bag. Alright, Squirt. Figure out where you're going to be, because I'm all set. Skulu nodded and smiled just long enough for Dash to return the expression. Then turned to focusing on her prized book. Unfortunately, Skulu was torn. Wrapped up in the potentially calming story, she had begun to grab her own sleeping bag. Wasn't about to gamble a meeting with the headless horse or even the olden pony by going back alone to grab it. She scuffed her hoof against the ground, muttering an mm or two before forcing herself to trot up to Rainbow, who had already started to reread the opening of the story to herself quietly. Hey, Rainbow Dash, do you think I could just sit with you? <laughs> I forgot my sleeping bag and I don't want to drag it all the way out here. You know, since you already have ears and all. Dasha finally turned her attention away from the story and was about to reply. The wind howled, branches shook, and leaves swirled in a spasmodic dance down to the ground by the fire, <coughs> causing shadows to float along the firelit ground. A moment later, Dash found the orange filly already in the sleeping bag with her. The kid sure could move fast when she wanted to. Yeah, sure, whatever. All right, here we go. You're going to love these stories. Even I couldn't put them down. This one's called Daring Dew and the Sapphire Statue. Twilight showed it to me one time when I broke my wing and I was stuck in the hospital until it got better. I was hesitant, but then I found out that not all books are brainy or boring. Off in the distance, the wind rattled the trees further. And then animals scurried around in the bushes, with no room to move or look around. Skulu pressed herself against the warm blue pony torso of Abel to her more. Dash smiled a little, instinctively wrapping her free hoof around the tangerine filly's back. You're being awfully clingy, Squirt. Don't tell me you're still spooked over those ghost stories I was telling you earlier. Me? <laughs> no, 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 no way. I'm not scared of those silly old stories anymore. <laughs> yeah, no fear here. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just cold. That fire isn't that warm, you know. <laughs> if you say so. Well, I suppose this Pegasus can double for a pillow as well as storyteller pony for the night. Dash remarked, playfully ruffling the Philly's mane before beginning to read. Just as Rainbow Dash herself had done when she first traversed through the hot, mosquito-filled tropical jungle with Daring Do in her adventure to find the sapphire statue, Skulu listened intently, hanging on every word. When the jungle cats attacked, Skulu's mouth hung slightly open as she attempted and failed to read further ahead 
by Rainbow Dash was out of anticipation. When the mare was caught by the dastly Aoisodl and placed in an impossible trap, the filly made the appropriate woe. And when she escaped, awesome. As pages went by, the strength of the begging flames from the campfire diminished. And so, too, did the young filly's consciousness. The warm rainbow pony hadn't budged since the story had begun. And Scooter was sure she had found the comfiest thing to cuddle up to when trying to fall asleep. Ever. By the time Daring Do had swiped the statue from our Suttles clutches and left the beast to yell her name in frustration. The orange pony had lopsidedly fallen asleep against Rainbow Dash's chest. <laughs> Out like a light. Dash commentated to herself in a whisper, closing the book with one hoof and using her wing to maneuver the sli- silently sleeping filly out of the sleeping bag. Packing up her things and gently placing Skulu on her back, she fluttered back into the cave. She laid the pony back into her smallest sleeping bag, let her own things down to the cave floor, and then, for what she hoped would be the final time that night, snuggled herself into her back and let her head hit the pillow. Upon the moon, visible to no pony, asleep as they were, the regal face of a smiling alicorn peered down her kingdom of night below, satisfied with her sleeping subjects. The End